It was an afternoon in August, and I wanted to play Guitar Hero. Fired up my PlayStation 2, loaded in the Guitar Hero 3 game disc, plugged in my Guitar Hero controller, and waited patiently for the game menu to load. But it never did. I reloaded it, but same result. Perhaps the disc is bad. It's okay, I have other versions of Guitar Hero. One by one I tried, but it wasn't reading discs. This upset me, but didn't surprise me. I've had this PlayStation 2 slim since winter of 2007. It was my first and only DVD player until about 2014, and of course, of course, I played a lot of Guitar Hero and Katamari Damacy. The disc reader was likely very, very, very tired. I found a replacement disc drive on eBay and a repair guide on iFixit and got to work. It was tedious, but doable. I reassembled and tried Guitar Hero again. Same result. Sad, forlorn, a full Sunday lost. I returned to eBay and I don't even remember why because like I said, it was August of last year, but I got another disc reader. I don't know if I thought the original one didn't work or what, but either way, after disassembling again, channeling Dr. Meredith Gray, dissecting bilateral to the mediastinum, I mean the ribbon cables, this one didn't even fit. So, totally a fail. I was at a loss. I'd also read so many articles and forum posts at this point that I was no longer convinced it was definitely the disc reader because it seemed that a wide variety of hardware could have decided they were quite finished, especially with the slim. Because I could boot to the PlayStation BIOS, that splash screen, it meant the motherboard was intact, which is very good news. If that's intact, then there are homebrew solutions that can load the games on top of the BIOS as kind of a workaround to the disc reader being out of commission. You just need to follow a bunch of proprietary steps perfectly with esoteric custom builds of tool chains to flash a memory card with it. And I, I don't mean that as an insult or to sound flip. It's amazing that any of this stuff works at all and that people are just doing this in their free time. And I completely understand it's like that. But nonetheless, all those steps really intimidated me. And every few weeks when I thought about Guitar Hero, I would open the tab in my save tabs and read through them, become intimidated again and move along until finally almost a year later and still just wanting to play Guitar Hero, I found you could buy a pre-flash card for about $10 and that felt incredibly worth it to me. So I did just that. Sometimes I feel pressure to do everything myself with these kinds of projects because, hey, uh, it is called Blitz City DIY. But as I get older, I care a lot more about my time than the litmus test of if I'm DIY or die enough. And I just want to play Guitar Hero here. I loaded up the card and booted the PlayStation and oh my God, the menu showed up right away. This was the first positive step in this whole endeavor. I chose Open PlayStation Loader or OPL as my method because you can use network attached storage with it. And I already have a Samba or SMB drive on my network. It's a Raspberry Pi running Open Media Vault, and I did a video on it a few years ago. Still serves me well. Get it? Because it's a server? Yeah. Anyway, so I created a directory and a new share on OMV, and I entered the provisions into OPL, and it didn't connect. And I kept trying over and over, and it wouldn't work, and I was searching so many forum posts and articles, and it was so frustrating because like I said, I, I just want to play Guitar Hero. This all started because I just want to play Guitar Hero. And how hard could that possibly be to just play Guitar Hero? And apparently it's incredibly hard, so hard. And it's just so frustrating and... Okay, after some deep breaths and some better phrase search terms, I found the missing key, OPL needs SMB drives to use SMB1 security, which is incredibly outdated, but I understand. When I changed OMV to SMB1, my Windows PC could no longer see the drive as expected, but hey, OPL could, and the PlayStation connected to it. And could it be? Oh my God, it works. What? Yeah. Wow, did it. 
I was playing Guitar Hero. I was loading the Guitar Hero 3 ISO and I was choosing a song and I was playing it. I was playing Guitar Hero. But of course, I was only about 75% there. The SMB worked, but I couldn't leave OMV in that state for so many reasons, but mainly because it was too low a security version for my Windows machine to recognize. And suddenly, this project was now a Raspberry Pi project. I considered for a moment creating another OMV instance, but then I thought about the unused Raspberry Pi 02W that I had, and I thought, if I'm only sharing literally one folder, OMV is likely a bit overkill. So I went to installing Raspberry Pi OS Lite. That version of the OS does not have a GUI desktop. It's basically just a terminal with a file system. And that's really all I need here. In the chaos that is my TV area, I have a PoE switch that I use to power my Raspberry Pi OMV setup. So many acronyms. I decided I would do the same for Zero with a PoE splitter and then an on-the-go USB hub with Ethernet input to open this new circle of dongle hell that I can drag around like a deranged cyberpunk cat toy with the lanyard included on the floor case because hey, who doesn't want to carry around their single board computer on their wrist like a nouveau modern wristlet? So I plugged in the Pi to the PoE switch and I attempted to SSH in and Thank God it worked. So now I needed to mount the USB drive that would store my OPL folder. Luckily, I just did a Raspberry Pi project for my day job where I had to mount an external drive. It's this NFC movie player, very cool, check it out. Also, it was my idea to include a tiny bowl of popcorn in the hero shots. I think that really like made the project. You basically have to mount the drive to a place in the operating system and then edit this file called fstab to be like, no, seriously, I really do want to use this drive at the spot all the time, every time, please, oh, please. And then you reboot and you try listing the directory. And if it's there, then yay, you mounted the drive. And it sounds really simple, but <laughs> you'd be surprised just like trying to play Guitar Hero. Next was creating an SMB share for this folder on the Pi. Luckily, there was an article from Magpie Magazine walking through doing just that, so I basically just followed along. I also came across an OPL tutorial that listed SMB settings for OPL, which somehow hadn't found before, but hey, I added a few settings to my config file, like saying the security version to one. Now was again the 25th moment of truth. I booted the PlayStation. I went into settings. I changed to the new SMB share. I tried to reconnect and it worked. And there they all were. All the Guitar Hero games I have, including Rock the 80s, plus the other games like Katamari and Lego Star Wars and Super Monkey Ball and Lego Batman. And what can I say? I don't have very mature video game taste. And finally, 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 I could play Guitar Hero. And I did just that. And now I can play whenever I'd like. Honestly, I feel like this video needs a postscript because I'd love, 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 love to rant about media preservation and right to repair and actually owning the things you buy, but I'll spare you for now, I guess, because it already feels long-winded and who knows if anyone will follow all the acronyms as it is. I'll have links in the description for the resources I described, and much like my NFC Raspberry Pi media player, I hope my experiences documented here help someone avoid the series of unfortunate events that delayed my one goal in life to play Guitar Hero. <laughs> <laughs>